to uh, call the Community and Economic Development Committee to order. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Alderman Tyser? Here. Alderman Wesley? Here. Alderman Talloway? Here. Alderman Subak? Alderman Winger? Here. Alderman Cole? Here. Alderman Snipe? Here. Alderman Talloway? Here again. Mayor Johnson? Oh, yeah, we're all happy. I'm here too, Shirley. <laughs> and Ginch. Alderman Chalky's here. Chalky? Here. <laughs> okay. Um, I like to make I like to make a motion to approve the minutes of July twentieth, two thousand and six, with one correction. At the top, were people present or the aldermen that were present? Like to add uh, Alderman Knipe. He was president present at that meeting. Move. Do I have a second? Changes. Second. second. Question? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, at this point, what I'd like to do is uh, I'm going to ask the uh, city manager to introduce our guest. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to, at this time, uh, introduce Tom Rivera and Terrence Jenkins. They will be giving a presentation on what they can offer in terms of economic development for Wooddale. Council members and staff have received the memo outlining what role staff must complete and what areas we would like to use uh, these consultants. Tom Rivera has over 40 years experience in marketing and economic development. He is the past CEO of the Greater Woodfield Convention Bureau and has worked for many area communities including Hoffman Estates, Rockford, um, focusing on hotel, retail and restaurant development. Terrence Jenkins uh, served as executive director for the downtown management organization for the city of Evanston as well as consultant for area communities. He has over 20 years of experience in developing action plans with timelines, accountabilities, focusing on results in economic development. They represent Tom Rivera and Associates, a business consultant group that does developmental marketing for communities, as well as public and private sector corporations, associations, and educational institutions. Gentlemen, would you like to step up to the table? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mayor Nelson, members of the council, we're delighted to be with you this evening. Yes. Pardon? Mayor Johnson. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, not that I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I apologize both to the mayor and to the council. Not a good way to start. At any rate, uh, if you would. Uh, Terry and I have been working with your staff for some time now. And we're really excited about the, uh, the opportunity uh, that uh, the city has at this point in its history. We know that what we're talking about tonight is a focus on the, the town center uh, and your transportation-oriented development project. Uh, and we're, we've been through uh, all the research. We know you've completed the research for that project. And uh, a decision on the realignment of Irving Park is imminent, which is a major part uh, of that uh, development. And uh, Terry will talk to you about transportation-oriented development background for our, for our group. He's been doing this for 20 years and is really uh, one of the tops in the, in the Midwest on it. Uh, this not only is about the town center, though I'm, I'm sure you realize that. This is about the Western Access and the, and the Thorndale Corridor. While we uh, expect you to consider us to work on the, uh, on the town center, we also would very much like to, to encourage you to consider the whole ball of wax at, at this time because the opportunity is, is terrific. The East Irving Park TIF corridor also is part of this, and we've talked to the staff at length about the industrial park uh, development, site development, and redevelopment. All four of these issues are, uh, are such that we believe that no other Chicago metro community has the positive options open now 
to the city of Wooddale. We believe that in your history, you probably have not had a point like this in, uh, until this present time. Before you go on. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And, and I just want everybody up here to know, I did not talk to this man okay, <laughs> prior to this, but I have been saying that for several years now, okay? I, I, exactly that, that this community is, is prime, okay? And, and it's up to us to get it moving. So thank you. Okay. You can you wrote I'm not totally crazy. <laughs> you wrote him a letter though, huh? No. no. <laughs> well, I've worked in, in this area uh, for many years, representing 13 other suburbs in this area. And I can tell you there's some, been some big milestones. And this is the next one for this whole area. Uh, but how can we help, Jerry and I? We can provide the immediate day-to-day -day development expertise to get your projects moving now. We can help plan and Im implement an ongoing program that will take full advantage of this singular opportunity for the city of Wooddale. That's what we can do. Uh, Tom Rivera and Associates, uh, uh, Frank has outlined for you a, a little bit of the background. I did want you to know that in addition to uh, 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 what, what the company does as a whole, we already are working for the city. Uh, I brought in a, a, a prime hotel developer to look at uh, building a hotel uh, along the new Thorndale corridor. So we're already started working with you. Um, my years of experience, 22 years as president of the Bureau, development of the new Renaissance Schomburg Hotel and Convention Center was one of my projects. So that's, that was a 20 year uh, job, by the way, before we finally got it open. Currently involved in the uh, $500 million expansion of the Election Brothers Healthcare uh, Network, which includes uh, uh, Election Brothers Medical Center, St. Alexis, in the Hoffman Estates, the Rehab Center, and the Behavioral Health Hospital. And uh, it would be my hope to talk to you also about having a 24-hour uh, healthcare operation in the, in the town center at, at some time. I think it would be something that would be of great benefit to the, uh, to the community. Um, working on the development of the new Hoffman Estates Entertainment District at Prairie Stone, uh, which is a, a big pro uh, project, and that area will become a, a Midwest destination uh, before too long. Uh, the hotel development projects in Wooddale, Hoffman Estates, and other suburban communities. I'd like Terry to take over at this point and talk to you about uh, BDI. Uh, good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. My name is Terry Jenkins with Business Districts, Inc. What's listed on this slide is uh, our current assignments, uh, the communities in which we're working now. Uh, the one on the bottom, South Suburb Mayors and Managers, we're actually involved with 35 communities in the South Suburbs that are part of that association. The next slide lists some of the other current communities in which we're working. And the last bullet, as Tom implied, uh, talks to you a little bit about the suburbs we've worked that has a metro train station where we've done transit-oriented development planning and implementation for the communities listed there. The last reference is we did the strategic plan for the entire Metro Electric line, which is the line that runs from the southwest into the city uh, and all the communities along that line. Uh, what is it that we do at Business Districts, Inc., a 15-year-old company? Uh, these bullets list a lot of the things that we do, but I guess to capsulize it, what we do is think of, think of what we do as a three-legged stool. The first leg of the three-legged stool is we help you understand how the market thinks they can make money here because the market won't come unless they think they can make money. Se and there's a lot of things that go into that. Secondly, we try to understand your vision. What do you want here? We try to combine your vision with what the market says their ability to make money is. And obviously when you combine them, the touch points become your opportunities. We then, that's the second leg. The third leg is to relate those opportunities to your land uses. The market says we can make money. You said we'd like the way you're gonna make money here, whether it's retail, commercial, whatever. Where are the land uses that the market can find to make its money and achieve your vision? That's the three-legged stool. And then once we know that, then the whole seat of the stool is what are all the things you need to do to bring those three legs together? Land use, market opportunity, and your vision. It's about that simple. So this laundry list of things that we do really is that three-legged stool example.
from um, uh, an assessment of where those opportunities are, exactly determining the sites for redevelopment that have the highest potential, economic analysis is understanding the land economics with you as to how somebody's going to make money, and to the extent they ask you for support, which many developers do in their economic model, the next bullet talks about how you underwrite that, how you decide whether or not you should put support in, how you decide what your return on investment is, if you are partnering with someone, for instance, in a TOD in de development. Uh, people look at downtowns and town centers as their sense of character, sense of place, the thing that is the identity for their community. So you might be surprised that someone who's involved in economic development refers to public space initiatives, but we think that open space gathering areas are part of that whole sense of character that creates that downtown cluster that you're looking for. And then we get heavily involved in developer and tenant recruitment. Tom's going to give you a quick look uh, backwards at the things that we have done to prepare for tonight. And then I'm going to give you a perspective look uh, as to what's going forward. We know that you have been through a very we know that you've been through a very heavy research phase. Uh, we've looked at all and uh, studied all of the studies. We understand the, uh, uh, from the four meetings we've had with the staff, uh, what's going on with the East Irving Turf District, uh, Station Area TIF, the great separation. Can I interrupt for one minute? Sure. The TIF District, we didn't pass a TIF District yet. What, what I mean. I think it means it's under it's under consideration. Right, it's under consideration. It's but, I mean, he now. keeps bringing up the TIF, but it hasn't. The one in place now yeah. is the East Irving, the station area TIF refers to. They're yeah. thinking about whether or not TIF is a financial tool that you need in the future. That right. Can right, right, right. If you As decide these, that it is, then you would be safe to have put it in place. Right. The city manager would like to make a comment on yes. this, too. Yes, we, we are in stage one of the of the TIF. We've already agreed to retain someone to look at the feasibility, and we've identified one area which may uh, expand or it may contract or it may, you know, till we move to stage two, three, and four, we don't have a TIF. But we did alert them to that area to get, since, uh, you know, it was a free consulting, we thought we'd let them look at that. Right, we're looking at the opportunities overall that you have before you, and that certainly is, is one of them, okay? Uh, your grade separation uh, uh, decision, uh, uh, as we understand it, is, is imminent. Um, and uh, this slide is just there to tell you that we've invested four meetings with your staff. We've, I think we have a really terrific rapport with them at, at this point. Uh, and uh, and uh, so we're, we're pretty much up to speed and ready to go to work, Terry. Um, speaking of up to speed, when we reviewed um, the things that came out of the meeting with your staff and we reviewed the memorandum which was sent to all of you summarizing um, the things that you were considering, um, when, when I began to think about what does that translate into what you want to do as a deliverable, uh, these are the things that came out to us. Um, you can't really pursue economic development until you fully understand the intentions, goals, and objectives of the owners and tenants in the area. So understanding that is the first step. Uh, confirming my first leg on the three-legged stool, how does the market think they're going to make money here, means confirming your trade area strengths. Uh, relating that to land uses, where are the sites where development can occur first, second, and third? Development of an opportunity matrix analysis, which is just fancy words that say, what are the priorities? What can you do fast? What's going to be intermediate? What's going to take long term? And then you note the second reference there, what infrastructure will you need to think about to, to create the envelope in which private sector development can occur? Um, it's our understanding that zoning changes are under consideration, nothing before you yet, but under consideration for uh, the downtown station area. We would propose to help you develop an underwriting guide and look at your municipal development process so that um, it's contemporary, it protects you as a city uh, in making sure that you have adequate protection when you're talking to developers that, that you can exercise your municipal decision process in a way that suits you. 
On the other hand, we want it to be user friendly so developers know exactly what you want them to do, what hoops you want them to jump through, what the timelines are, and they'll know they're going to get a yes or no in a reasonable amount of time. The underwriting guide is what I referred to earlier. To the extent, and it, it doesn't mean that that's the case, some things can be market driven, but to the extent some people ask you for TIF increment, sales tax rebate, infrastructure improvements to make their deal work better, we hope to create an underwriting grid that shows you what makes sense for you and what doesn't make sense for you. And that's that portfolio of tools, as I refer to it in the next uh, bullet. And then to the extent that relocation becomes necessary, which is yet to be determined, we'd outline some experiences we've had as to what other municipalities have done relative to relocation policies. Um, the bottom piece after that uh, stool is formed is to incorporate uh, those decisions into your overall financial plan so that you know on a one, two, three, and four year basis what the role of city financing is in the overall development of not only the downtown uh, but the, very, the other corridors and the business park that we talked about. And then once those plans are in place that you're comfortable with, including your financial planning, we would initiate the tenant developer RFQs and RFPs that are necessary to get the development that, that uh, you want and meets the market. And then Tom's going to be heavily involved, given his background, on consensus building, communication, and trade and image marketing. Uh, we are thinking about, yet to be determined with your staff, if you ask us to work with you, um, we understand that you're, you really want to be action-oriented. You went through the nine-month uh, process with HNTB to determine a strategy for your one area. You'd now like to see some action. I think our first priority would be to sit down with the staff and develop the short-term priorities, which we're actually looking at three months to six months, and put a timeline, accountabilities, meaning how will you know what's accomplished, uh, a budget to each of those, and then develop short-term, intermediate, and long-term objectives. So you could see very quickly what's to be accomplished soon, what's to be accomplished in the middle, what's to be accomplished longer, how do you measure results, what are the costs, where does the money come from, what are the timelines, and what's the financial impact to you if things are built as hoped for, meaning not only what could be built, what is your cost for it to be built, and what is the revenue that comes out of the ground when it is built in terms of property and sales tax. That's what those slides mean. Um, we would think that given the, the kind of development you're talking about in two or three key areas in your community, that you would want it to be not just people who come to council, but people throughout the community that would get regular information about that. We would be pleased, we do this all the time, to help you on the communication side, whether it's coffees, forums, newsletters, whatever you think is appropriate to help your constituents, all constituents, whether they're property owners, tenants, citizens, whatever, know what's going on. And we feel it's a responsibility to help build consensus for the things that you're going to be delivering about as time goes by. Tom. We're ready to begin. Um, and we believe also that this, could, this is a community-wide, you know, a citywide project. But not only is, is the council uh, to be involved and the staff, uh, but uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the private sector, and the, uh, and the citizens themselves. This is, is such an unbelievable opportunity that, uh, uh, that it really will, will call for the consensus that Terry just talked about. Why, why should you choose us to do this? We're highly experienced and qualified. Uh, both Terry and I will be directly involved. Uh, we're not sitting here today and you'll never see us again. Uh, we're both excited about the project and uh, and would like to carry it through. Uh, time and the re we have the time, the resources available to begin right away. You're through the research phase. It's time to start getting things done. Our resources are tailored to your specific city requirements. We can work with your staff and with you as a council to to first format and then to get done what you want to have happen. Commitment to the budget, timeline, and accountability. As we say, if, uh, if you give us a go ahead, we can sit down with the staff and work out the, uh, the program of action and the budget 
uh, within the next two or three weeks. You could, you could even maybe take a look at it at the next council meeting. And we really want to encourage you to, uh, to think about uh, the consensus building orientation of this thing. I think most of all, and, and you can tell in my voice, uh, this is a very exciting and, new and unique opportunity for the city of Wooddale. And it would be a matter of great pride for us and our companies to, to be involved uh, uh, with your growth. And uh, I guess uh, thank you, and uh, we'll be happy to answer all of your questions. First off, I'd just like to say that we thank you for coming. We thank you for, you know, putting together your presentation. And I don't know if anybody else here can hear, but I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, you know, I, I, I've been saying, I mean, unfortunately, unfortunately, one of the problems, and you having been in this business for a long time, you, you both know, okay, that you can't just snap your fingers and it happens overnight that there's a, there is I mean the one thing I've learned in you know over the last couple of years and in being involved in this is is how much of the legwork okay you, how many things you have to have in place the right zoning all you know what do you want what do you where do you want to go it's it's kind of like learning how to crawl and then you know but the opportunity and, and again where Wooddale is located we are we're, we're prime and I mean I'm not sure if we were looking to approve these tonight Frank is that um, we did want to get um, some direction from the council as I promised I wanted to bring uh, these the consultants that staff looked at and considered uh, for this particular role um, we had how much did we have allocated already for this didn't we allocate money already for this? It was just finding somebody? Yes. Yes, what? I mean, we. It was, uh, we asked for um, about $37,000 to get right, started this year. If yeah. I'm not mistaken. Okay. Alderman Wesley? What? Uh, obviously, you're the first company that we dealt with so far on this project. What is that, if we would approve you, what, what is the cost? That's going to cost us. Yeah. That's a good question. The the list that I showed you back here. If you go through those four bullets, and then these three bullets, and then these three bullets. I mean, if if one let's start. If one were to do that just through a consultant at the quickest pace possible, you're looking there at six or nine months worth of work. I don't think you want to do that, and I wouldn't advise you to do that. I think what you want to do is you want to find a combination between our professional experience, we wear two hats. A, we have professional experience. B, we represent an extra pair of hands for your staff, two pairs of hands, and I have a staff of two, so it depends how many pair you use. I think what you would want to do is craft with staff a relationship that we could bring back to you in a couple, three weeks. Maximizes, staff does what you don't need us to do. Our time is limited to our professional expertise and to those things that the extra pair of hands is going to do that's appropriate for us to do because you want to really watch your expenses and then relate that to your budget. And our goal over the next couple of weeks would be to bring that back in a capsulized way. Exactly how that's going to play out, we probably need a good two to four hour meeting with your staff to talk about each of these bullets and figure out those relationships. I can tell you that um, I work for communities on what we might call implementation. If I call what HNTD did for you as strategy, and then this being implementation, I work for communities where I haven't billed them $10,000 in a year. I work for other communities where, one not too far from you, where they've used my staff and the staff of a related company and have billed out 50000 over two years. It all depends on the projects, the issues, and the role you expect us to play. And um, I guess the best way to put how I think about this is 
any consulting firm is interested in fees. But I hope you believe me when I say that I'm much more interested in your reference than I am your fees. So that if we drove fees for three to six months silly and I can never use Wooddale as a reference, I don't really benefit in the long term. We really do want to develop a partnership with you that relates budget to fees and your ability to do things internally. So if, if, if I heard as I did that you were looking at $37,000, I don't know whether that means fiscal year, calendar, whatever it means. Um, we would want to craft a plan that came in well under that, and then you could evaluate whenever we got to that number how well we had done. Well, yeah, let me. Did, did, uh, wait, wait a minute. Let me. Oh, go ahead. I, I'm sorry, Chief. Come in. All I was going to say was, is this okay? I've talked a lot with with uh, the city manager and with the assistant manager, um, as well as Roger and. Uh, Ross, okay, and I apologize, Ross. I don't know why I keep getting. Um, we've talked a great deal about this, and a lot of what these gentlemen would do would be after our staff has addressed a lot of the a lot done a lot of the gr the groundwork or the legwork themselves. Um, it's it's kind of like you know, you're saying you could go and you can hire a consultant and they'll come in and they'll they'll do everything you know but that is not what we're looking for uh, as a city I don't think that's what we're you know staff is looking for they want to be involved and bring do a lot of these things up front so when we're talking about you know utilizing a consultant such as the these gentlemen okay and their companies using them for us it's more to do the what are the things we can't do? Those are the, the types of issues that they would be addressing. What are the things that we can't do that we don't, we're not good at doing? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, not, none of us up here, and I honestly, I, I, I believe this, none of us up here are engineers. So we can't go out and we can't engineer, a, you know, uh, or come up with the specs on a, a design and something because none of us know it. So there are certain things that, that need to be done, and I think this group, would be a good group that could fit fit our needs, okay, for what we're trying to do in the community. And at that, I'll, I'll turn it over to the city manager and ask him for his input. Um, that's exactly how we wanted to approach this. We wanted to use staff and with our, well, now we have the GIS system and do as much as we can. Right now, um, we're waiting for, um, you know, decision to be made in regard to the intersection, for example. Um, that's going to be, you know, that's coming up soon in the next couple months. We should have an idea if, in fact, that's going to go forward or where it, it might go if it does go forward. Um, other issues are Western access. That's going to go, no matter what happens now, we know with O'Hare Field. So that will be another opportunity and in talking to these two gentlemen, they think that that might, you know, go faster even than the downtown development. The downtown development, we won't know what we're doing with that in, until we get some uh, decision from the city council. Other areas that, that might um, come online would be if in our investigation of the Tift area or other areas downtown that we see that we have some land that can be used we have to be able to put these area together um, developers uh, I, I know sometimes we might think from a common sense standpoint well we'll just wait until developers come in and pitch it and uh, maybe uh, Terry could kind of expand on that uh, can we just wait for the developers to come why can't we do that and this will give you an idea well um, well I read the HNTB report and it was well done and so I think I understand your numbers pretty well, your numbers meaning your market potential. Um, we quickly run some numbers that we do also very quickly and compare them to those numbers and I'm sure it's gonna, what's gonna come out of that is that you have a very positive opportunity which means spendable income, things of that nature. It, people think it's very hard to get developers interested in an area 
we could probably prepare a package and talk to three to five developers and, and probably in the first 20 minutes when we ran through the numbers with them, they would say, all right, that's enough. You told me. I see I can make money there. Where would you like me to go? Where's the site? Uh, we need this. We need a half acre. We need a third of acre. We need traffic counts to do this. Do you have a site like that? If you don't have a site, do you know someone can, we can talk to to control the land? What will the owner likely be like when we get there? Can we assemble two lots together? Would the municipality be involved in that assembly? Can we reroute this or that to make the infrastructure around the site work better for what we do? We'd simply like to be in a position that when we talk to those developers, we've got those answers as to what the potential is. So if we have a terrific site and a difficult landowner and a pretty good site and a great landowner, we might be standing for in front of you saying, let's go for the pretty good site first because the terrific site has land acquisition and land control issues associated with it. That's the kind of stuff that I don't know yet. Thank you. That's exactly it. And that is why we need to do this. And we need to do it now. This is the time to start. It's the time to have people like this bringing it all together and out there talking with different prospects. So then our city will flow. Everything will flow together. We'll have a nice, harmonious atmosphere. So I'd like to see this happen. And we need to start now. Thank you. One, one quick thought yeah. um, about opportunity. Um, it, it would appear that Thorndale is, to me, just driving up and down the road as, as a significant opportunity. You look at the traffic counts there, you look at the demographics and the population around here, and you look at the raw land, um, it suggests opportunity. But I was saying to Tom over dinner tonight that while it suggests opportunity, I'd kind of like to find out what are the reasons why that opportunity hasn't started yet? And secondly, we really need to understand how the road is going to be configured exactly. once, once that happens because the opportunity can be enhanced or diluted depending on the engineering that goes on that road and what that does to retail commercial access along that corridor. So on the one hand, it would appear Thorndale is the easiest opportunity. On the other hand, I need to understand that better. And the other thing I would mention is that, that downtowns or town centers, uh, the Irving Park corridor, you should know, and I, I hope this doesn't surprise you, that it's this inverse relationship. It's the area where citizens are most enamored with because it feels like they're downtown, it feels like the sense of character. It's the place where they want to feel good, function good, look good, give them memories.